Alright, hi guys, of course as always, welcome back to another episode of whether or not Pokemon fixed or ruined a Pokemon. That said though, a small disclaimer from our previous episode and who was really better, where I was covering Volcarona vs Frostmoth. That episode was to really showcase why Volcarona is so successful and while Frostmoth may not be as successful and it was very clear that of course some of you want to see a more even battle and I get that. But at times I really just want to celebrate why the sign really works and why something doesn't. And I'm really here to talk about Frostmoth. You figured that this series was going to cover old Pokemon, but no, I want to talk about Pokemon I do believe they initially ruined by default. I definitely believe this was an inherent decision to make Frostmoth not necessarily bad, but maybe not too broken. And here we are. Luckily today I have um, guest host in Bryce, who is a person I've been following quite a lot. And excellent VGC player and he makes a really really good content so definitely check him out as he will help me out with covering why Frostmoth isn't working in VGC and why you should never necessarily consider it as I will of course will covering the singles meta and why I think it falls behind by default. I think it's important when we talk about Frostmoth to talk about why it fails. The ice and bug combination doesn't necessarily need to be all that bad Sure, the, its resistances and weaknesses, and okay, with its very weaknesses, are tough to deal with. I mean, resistance in grass, ground, and ice is quite fair, but the weaknesses are in the plenty of flying and steel, of course, being tough to deal with, and pretty much being one to KO by fire and rock type moves. But like I said, that doesn't necessarily need to be a flaw, because most really, really strong offensive Pokemon, and ice and bug are one of the offensive typings there is, really could do a significant chunk of damage if it was speedy. And that's the fault here. Frostmoth might very well be forced to take a hit, and there is some scenarios where Ice scales its ability to, of course, get a special defense boost of 50% will not save it. Its physical is just not there. 16 in its defense really will knock that Pokemon out most of the times. And another thing that kind of holds it back are its defined checks and counter, which are defined by its typing, really, as it can't do anything against Steel types. And it doesn't help and has in no real way of getting any types of recovery. Um, I got a suggestion for a guy called Necrostivo, who is a very long time follower, that maybe, much like Volcarona, this guy should have got some type of synergy move that will pretty much be something like Volcarona's fiery dance and boost his special attack by one and what not being somewhat of a safe ice move. And I actually agree, I think it's a missed opportunity. Another thing that kind of false with this Pokemon is that no freeze right? There is basically forced to run an Ice and Bug stab most of the time and there will always be Pokemon that wall this. Clearly Ice types but also Pokemon like Jellicent then of course the Poison and War types in the Toxapex. Basically there are defined counters and offensive viability Pokemon that will just push this Pokemon back naturally not having something like a power or heat wave or anything really to push some of these matchups back really just make sure that this Pokemon never has the chance to really shine and like I said no re proper recover move like Roost forces it to go for rest talk strat this Pokemon by default could have bulk through some scenarios I'm sure but we don't get that it is born by default to not be able to deal with certain matchup an issue that Volcarona doesn't have and I'm surprised they actively decided to do this because it makes the Pokemon theoretically a lot weaker than it should have been Consider it clearly has a design with the intention of being a counterpart to Volcarona you kind of figured they wouldn't limit it to basically not be able to touch certain individual Pokemon like this but it is in the singles and you know VGC is also an aspect to consider when it comes to Generation 8's Pokemon so Bryce please hit it off with your analysis on the Frostmoth so when I saw Valkyrie, or I guess when I saw Frostmoth for the first time, I was like everyone else, and I wanted it to be the next Valkyrie. Um, one, I love Valkyrie, and two, I think Frostmoth is, or it's Ice type, which is like my favorite typing um, in the game. Um, but I guess what I failed to realize, kind of like everyone, is how much inferior Frostmoth's stats are. And I think that's what really holds it back, why it's so much worse than Valkyrie. Um, I mean, it's got good stats, it's just like, why Volcarona is so much better is because it's got that speed stat and what's really underrated, like, forget the defenses. Yeah, yeah, Volcarona's defense is just a little bit better with having 15 higher base HP, but Volcarona's fire 
um, typing is so much better than ice typing. Ice typing as an offensive, uh, like an offensive demon, doesn't do quite as much as uh, fire. Like fire, you can fire blast anything and like one shot it, especially if you're plus three. But if I like <laughs> ice beam, like a steel type, it's just not getting through. I guess that's the biggest thing. Like frost moth is always going to struggle against those steel types. Like it just, it just can't. Like Valkyrona doesn't. Like that's what's good about Valkyrona. Um, yeah. So let's talk about uh, Frost Moth and VDC. So just like um, VDC, Frost Moth is trash, <laughs> to say the least. But I think it is underexplored a little bit, and it could be okay. So obviously you want its good ability, which is Ice Scales. Um, Shield Dust isn't actually that bad because <clears throat> in VDC you actually get protected from Fake Out with Shield Dust, which is really nice. So that's not bad. Um, so it's really not bad. You could go with either ability. Um, I think I'd still prefer Icy Scales. Or Ice, ice Scales? Yeah. Um, um, it actually gets good VGC moves. So Tailwind, I, I picked out four here. Tailwind, really good support move. Helping Hand, um, also a very good support move. Safeguard, really good. And Wide Guard, those are both really, really good moves that you could probably use to your advantage to make this thing at least, at least a decent Pokemon. It also gets Aura Veil, it also gets um, Icy Wind, uh, I don't think Quiver Dance would help too much, but yeah, it gets those moves. Um, I just think its only place in VGC would be as a support Pokemon. I don't think it has any chance of being an offensive juggernaut. We'll, we'll leave that to Valkorona. Um, something I do want to note that is interesting, I honestly think that Snom with Eviolite might actually be better than Frostmoth. Now, now, now hold, hold, hold the phone on that. Um, it doesn't get any good moves, but, okay, that's not true. Snom, he gets way less moves. He gets, um, he gets Protect, of course, good Protect. He gets Struggle Bug, which is actually very good in VGC, and it's actually a very underused move right now. So, Struggle Bug hits both Pokemon and lowers both, both of their special attack stages by one, which is really good. It also gets Icy Wind, which lowers both of their stages by one. Having the Violet, it actually will be able to live hits, which is quite nice. Um, as for the other two moves, <laughs> I really don't know what to use. It actually gets Mirror Coat, which is hilarious if you pair it with Ice Scales and Eviolite. Um, it will probably be able to live a decent hit, and actually could potentially catch your opponent off guard, which I think would be really good. Maybe Protect for the last move? I don't know. Anyway, I, I low-key think Snom is better than Frostmoth. That's how bad Frostmoth is. Anyway, that's it. Thank you, Bryce. Awesome work, really. As you know, VGC is something I really can't cover myself. I could try to theoretically define it, but I wouldn't be on pinpoint as you are, which is why it's so helpful. And VGC is, of course, all things considered, the most competitive aspect of any Pokemon. So having that cover really is good, because singles, while covering a lot of ground, it aren't necessarily all the same in VGC, for obvious reasons. That said though, there is a silver lining with future DLC and possible new moves, one of those being of course Roost. I really hope it gets that, but if anything, I really want just something for Frostmoth to really hurt the, the Steel types, the um, Poison types theoretically, and the Fire types to completely resist and shut this Pokemon down naturally, as having defined shakes of course makes this Pokemon worse, it makes it close to not, I wouldn't say impossible, but very hard to effectively be used as often as possible. So definitely just give it something to at least hold it off. I mean, something like reduce or getting rid of hidden power is something that by default ruined this Pokemon naturally as it has no natural responses to certain matchup. And that is something that killing this Pokemon, it could have been, even though the stats isn't speaking for it, it still could have been a very, very defined Pokemon because of Quiver Dance and because of the stamps behind it. But not covering defined counters and shakes makes this Pokemon, I wouldn't say useless, but very hard to use effectively unless you're dedicated to really make this Pokemon work. Then you have to have a team around that, and that's really how you want a Pokemon to work. And that's why I think Pokemon ruined this Pokemon, and I really hope they fix him in these DLC. So with that said, Bryce, thank you for of course joining this episode. Make sure to check him out, and for everybody who's been watching, thank you for doing just that. You guys are awesome, and don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, for more content every Friday with whether or not Pokemon ruined or fixed a Pokemon. So that's it, have a great day, and take care, everyone. Bye.